Hey guys, it's Lord of the Pogs. I've done a few things you need to know videos. I've hit on maple syrup, coffee, movies, the 90s, popular music, and even sneakers. I've linked to all these down in the description, and while you're there, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. But one thing I haven't done yet is whiskey. I may be a retired alcoholic, we can talk more about that later, but whiskey is my favorite spirit. I used to be able to finish one of these in just a couple of days by myself. I don't drink like that anymore, and who doesn't love a good whiskey tasting? But how much do you really know about whiskey? Before we get started, let's get a couple of things out of the way. Southern Comfort isn't whiskey. It starts out as whiskey, but since it's infused with fruits and spices to add sweetness and smoothness, it's actually a liqueur. Jack Daniels is whiskey. It's also a bourbon. All bourbon is whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Hennessy also isn't whiskey. It's a brandy, which is made by distilling wine. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive into 15 things you need to know about whiskey. Whiskey fact number one. Is it whiskey or whiskey? Yes. Some whiskeys are spelled with an E between the K and the Y, and others don't have the E. Both are correct, and both are acceptable. The way you spell it depends on where it comes from. It's spelled whiskey without an E, only if it's from Scotland, Canada, England, Wales, or Australia. Irish and American whiskey is spelled with an E. This began during the 19th century when the Irish wanted to make a distinction between Irish whiskey and Scottish whiskey. In modern times, Scotch is one of the greatest liquors in the world. But around the 1870s, it was known to be of poor quality and horrible taste because of the distillation method they used at the time. When the Irish made their whiskies and exported them to America, they wanted to differentiate themselves from the low quality whiskey of the Scots. Adding the E between the K and the Y was crucial in differentiating the higher quality spirits from the lower quality spirits. Whiskey fact number two. The oldest whiskey in the world is over 150 years old. The Guinness World Record names a 400 milliliter bottle of Glenavon Special Liqueur Whiskey as the world's oldest whiskey. It is estimated to have been produced between 1851 and 1858 and was owned by a family in Ireland until it was sold to London's Bonham store, fetching an eye-watering sum of $18,000. $690. Let's get to the history facts. For the earliest known mention of whiskey, we need to go back to 1494, towards the end of the Middle Ages, when distillation was first mentioned in Scottish tax records. The Romans introduced alcoholic drinks to Britain even earlier in the 13th century. They called the still spirits aqua vitae, which means water of life in Latin. Depending on which side of the Irish Sea you're on, there's a difference of opinion as far as whether whiskey originated in Ireland or Scotland. Irish monks are credited with bringing distillation home from their travels to the Middle East during the Middle Ages, where they witnessed grape distillation. The Scots, on the other hand, argue that distillation evolved on their home turf naturally from their abundance of barley grain. Whiskey fact number four. The most expensive whiskey in the world sold for over a million dollars. In 2018, the 1926 Macallan Valerio Adami was auctioned in Edinburgh for $1,068,462. Part of the reason behind this price is that this particular whiskey comes in an extremely limited edition bottle. Designed by pop artist Valerio Adami, only 12 bottles featuring this particular label were ever produced. It originally sold for $25,000, and from day one, these bottles were already somewhat of a collector's item. Whiskey fact number five. 
whiskey was publicly available during Prohibition. The Prohibition era is a well-known period of American history that prohibited the manufacture, transportation, and sale of intoxicating liquors. So due to a loophole, licenses were issued to six companies to manufacture and bottle what was known as medicinal whiskey, and doctors could apply for a license to write prescriptions similar to medical marijuana today. These companies were Brown Foreman, Glenmore Distilleries, Frankfurt Distilleries, Shenley, American Medicinal Spirits, and APH Stitzel. Each individual was allowed to purchase one pint every 10 days, so long as they had a qualifying ailment. And it's estimated that doctors prescribed 64 million pints of whiskey during the first year of Prohibition alone. Whiskey fact number six. Tabasco sauce is aged in barrels previously used for aging whiskey. For most of its 150 year history, authentic Louisiana Tabasco has been aged exclusively in recycled white oak bourbon barrels. That wasn't the original plan though. When Tabasco sauce was first produced, stoneware jars were primarily used to age the pepper mash. By 1900, Tabasco had switched to solely using white oak barrels. No one is quite sure why the change was made, but it stuck. So will you detect some bourbon in your Tabasco sauce? Probably not. The company scrubs the barrels clean, removing all the bourbon char before fitting them with new stainless steel rings to remove any lingering traces of alcohol from the wood. Whiskey fact number seven. Whiskey is a good property investment. Unlike other alcoholic drinks, including wine, whiskey neither improves nor worsens with age, meaning under absolutely no circumstances will a bottle of whiskey ever lose its value. The older the bottle, the less readily available it becomes. So get yourself a couple of bottles of the good stuff to treasure. Whiskey fact number eight, bourbon can only be produced in the United States. On May 4th, 1964, Congress resolved that bourbon is a distinctive product of the United States, and furthermore, no whiskey made outside the United States can be labeled or described as bourbon. No other spirit has this designation. Bourbon originally comes from Kentucky. Bourbon is a type of whiskey, but not all whiskey is bourbon. The distinction lies in the specific production requirements and regulations associated with bourbon. Bourbon is produced through a specific distillation process. It must be distilled to no more than 160 proof, and it must be aged in new charred oak barrels starting at no more than 125 proof. Additionally, bourbon has specific legal requirements that must be met to be labeled as bourbon. These requirements include being produced in the United States and having a grain mixture that is at least 51% corn. Tennessee whiskey is similar to bourbon, but it's not actually the same thing. Tennessee whiskey is dripped through charcoal in a process known as the Lincoln County process. This makes it sweeter and milder than bourbon. Rye whiskey also stems from Kentucky, but the mash of rye in this whiskey makes for a spicier and drier drink compared to the sweeter taste of bourbon. Scotch refers to the whiskey of Scotland, Scotch whiskey or Scottish whiskey. As a general rule, when scotch is barreled, it has to sit there for at least three years. There is single malt scotch, which can be a blend of whiskeys from the same distillery, or blended scotch, which means your scotch is a blend of whiskeys from multiple distilleries. Irish whiskey is distilled very similarly to scotch. Canadian whiskey is often referred to as brown vodka. The Canadians brew their whiskey with a mash that usually consists of a mixture of primarily of corn and rye and aged for at least three years. Canadian whiskey is usually created as two separate whiskeys, the base whiskey and the flavoring, before being combined to create the final product. Japanese whiskey is known to be very close to scotch in terms of flavor and quality. The distillation process is very similar, but Japanese whiskey is known to be smokier and drier than most other whiskeys. Whiskey fact number nine, what's a dram? I don't know, what's a dram with you?
dram is the traditional Scottish name for a glass of whiskey. Here's how to order whiskey like a pro. Order your whiskey on the rocks or neat if you want it with or without ice, or with a twist for a slice of citrus peel, usually a lemon or an orange. Up means stirred with ice before being strained into a cocktail glass, but you usually only order this way for a whiskey-based cocktail like a Manhattan. If you've ever watched a James Bond movie, you've probably heard him say shaken, not stirred. A martini is made with a stirring motion. Shaking dilutes it more, which is a taste preference for some. That takes us to cask strength. When whiskey is bottled directly from the cask at a distillery, it's much stronger, usually 120 to 180 proof. Whiskey fact number 10, the grain bill. The mix that a distiller decides on, say 75% corn and 25% rye, that's the grain bill. Distillers play around with their grain bill to calibrate the perfect taste. Barley is the only grain used in whiskey making that's malted. So malt whiskey means 100% barley was used and anything else is considered grain whiskey. Malted barley contributes some slightly roasty notes and a dry finish, but it isn't too flavorful on its own. It's usually only a small percentage of any whiskey, more so for its fermentability than its flavor, but scotch is a notable exception. Corn whiskey is strongly sweet at first, but mellows significantly the longer it's aged. Rye whiskey is spicy and aggressive with notes of black pepper and cinnamon that get more intense throughout the aging process. Wheat whiskey is soft and light with a much subtler flavor than corn or rye whiskey. Generally, this simply allows the flavors of the other grains used to shine more brightly. Whiskey fact number 11. Only oak barrels are used for aging whiskey. A whiskey's interaction with its barrel, or cask, is a key component to how it turns out, affecting everything from flavor balance to color. Oak is the only wood used for these barrels. Partially for practical purposes like its strength and size, and partially for the fact that unlike pine, it doesn't contain thick, seeping resins. Although, I have to wonder, what would a whiskey taste like if it was aged in a pine barrel? Maybe similar to gin? But all you really need to know on the chemical side is that oak contains things called vanillins, kind of flavorful oil that gets drawn out during the aging process. Beyond that, the kind of oak that's used adds desirable qualities to the finished product. American oak is a relatively new addition to the whiskey scene, having been first used around World War II for post-prohibition economic reasons. And now 90% of the world's whiskey is aged in these. They're ideal because the trees mature quickly, pack a high concentration of vanillins, and grow with tall, straight, sturdy trunks that are easily shaped into barrels. European oak is the traditional option, having been used for scotch and Irish whiskey since the early 1800s. English, Scottish, Spanish, Russian, and French oak have all been used at one time or another, French oak barrels having been previously used for wine, and Spanish oak barrels having been previously used for sherry, but more for finishing than anything else. And Japanese oak, also known as Mizunara oak, is what Japanese whiskey is usually aged in. Japanese whiskey is often aged in sherry or bourbon barrels first, then transferred to Japanese oak towards the end of the process. Which type of barrel a distiller uses to the final classification of the whiskey doesn't matter nearly as much as the grain bill does, but there are a few notable exceptions. Bourbon, for example, must be aged in first-use oak barrels that have been charred on the inside. And you may run into whiskies, often scotch, labeled as single cask or single barrel. This means instead of mixing different barreled whiskies, the distiller stuck with only what was in a single barrel. The label on a bottle of single barrel usually has a batch and barrel number because no other whiskey produced now or in the future is likely to have the exact same flavor profile as that cask. This is a double-edged sword. If you really like a mass-produced whiskey, like, let's say, Maker's Mark, you know that the next bottle you buy 
is going to taste exactly the same because a huge number of barrels have been masterfully blended together for a dialed-in taste. But once a single cask whiskey is gone, so is its unique flavor. Whiskey fact number 12. Any grain can be used to make whiskey. Corsair, an artisanal distillery based in Tennessee, creates whiskeys from quinoa, oats, buckwheat, farro, and svelte. Some Japanese whiskey makers even use rice. However, Japanese liquor regulations state that anything labeled Japanese whiskey must be made from malted grains and water from Japan, be distilled in Japan to an alcohol content less than 95%, be aged in wooden casks in Japan for at least three years, and be bottled in Japan. Since rice isn't considered a malted grain, whiskey produced in Japan from rice can't be labeled as whiskey. But whiskey distilled in the United States from Japanese rice can be labeled as whiskey. Whiskey fact number 13. Scotch whiskey isn't really scotch unless it was produced in Scotland. Scotch whiskey can only be labeled as scotch if it has been left to age for at least three years in wooden casks in Scotland. Going back a minute, Hennessy is a brandy, but some Hennessy's are cognacs, a type of brandy. The distinction is that Hennessy is a cognac if it was produced in the French region of cognac. This is similar to champagne, which can only be labeled as champagne if it was produced in the French region of champagne. Otherwise, it's technically just sparkling wine. Whiskey fact number 14, you can get a degree in brewing and distilling. Brewing and distilling degrees are a relatively new concept. The first four-year brewing degree appeared in 1971 at the University of California, Davis as a fermentation science degree with a concentration in brewing. Similar degree programs are available at Western Kentucky University and Western Michigan University. Whiskey fact number 15. Mountain Dew was originally made to be a whiskey chaser. Tennessee bottlers Barney and Allie Hartman developed Mountain Dew as a mixer in the 1940s. Soft drinks were sold regionally in the 1930s, and the Hartmans had difficulty in Knoxville obtaining their preferred soda to mix with liquor, preferably whiskey, so the two developed their own. Originally a 19th century slang term for whiskey, the Mountain Dew name was trademarked for the soft drink in 1948. Thanks for watching. What did you think of my list? Please let me know in the comments. Make sure you check out my other Things You Need to Know videos. If you liked this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit that little bell in the corner to get notifications on more videos like this one. Bottoms up!